Hey creative people, Jimbo from Shabam here once again. Welcome to another Procreate tutorial. In the last video, some of you told me that some parts were a little bit too advanced to follow along, so I've decided to make another paper cut out effect in which I'm going to dig deeper in some parts. Today's piece will be slightly easier and you can follow along with a letter you draw or with just a font. Since I'm going to be using our latest product once again, make sure you grab the freebie which will be enough to follow along the steps I'm going to be talking about. Remember that you will find the link in the description below. As usual, I'm using an iPad Pro and the Apple Pencil, but you can use any iPad that supports Procreate and any other compatible stylus. Yeah, nothing else to add today, let's get started! We will start by creating a new document. I'm in Europe, so I tend to use centimeters. Here, I'm creating a horizontal canvas that's 20 times 30 centimeters. I'm keeping the DPI to 350, so I make sure I can reuse the piece for a little print in the future. I'm now pasting a letter from a piece I did back in Christmas. If you don't want to lose time drawing a new letter, you could grab something you did in the past as well. Since I need something a tad bigger, I'm bringing the opacity down of what I've just pasted and I'm redrawing it on top on a new layer. I'm using our brush Ripplizer, but you can use any native brush you feel comfortable with. Once your letter is correctly placed, we'll jump on to the next step, which is a truly fun one since there's not a lot of thinking involved. Grab another color, doesn't matter which one at this stage, and open the ultimate background set. If you just have the sample set, you can use the stamps Crafty Paper 3 and Watercolor Banner. If you do have the complete set, you will find a total of 36 ripped papers. In the video, I'm playing around with the beta version, so all the brushes are all over the place, sorry for that. Anyway, create a new layer for each individual stem and start filling up your canvas. So yeah, keep stamping until you're satisfied. I'm a bit of a punk, so I'll keep adding elements until I'm no longer afraid of the white space. Now you're seeing that some shapes are overlapping. If you're seeing that some of them are completely hidden, choose another color and drop it on those shapes that you don't see. Before we move on to the next step, we're going to change the colors of the whole piece. Here I'm using a super limited palette so it's easier to find a good balance. First, I've changed the background's color and now I'm choosing colors for the rest of the elements. Now we have the main composition done and it's time to start adding some effects. First of all, grab the letter and bring it on top of it all. With the letter selected, tap on it and click on select. Now select the shape that's touching the letter, scroll three fingers down the screen and tap on duplicate. Bring the new layer on top of the letter. Now repeat the same steps on all the paper cuts that are touching the letter. As you'll see, you're gonna have all these little cuts ready for the next step. Stop. 
select the shapes you just duplicated parts of and move them slightly. This will give a little offset effect and things will start looking dimensional already. Oh, by the way, you can also play with the size of them. Now it's time to decide where the light is coming from. It's totally up to you, the only important thing is to follow the same direction from now on. So duplicate the letter and drop a darker color on the bottom one. Now move it accordingly to your light direction and head to adjustments and click on Gaussian Blur. Once selected, you can adjust the amount of blur by moving your pencil right and left on the screen. The more blur you add, the further the letter will seem from the background. In this case, I wanna have it quite close to the background, so I just added a 6% Gaussian Blur. Now tap on Transform and select the Distort option. Use the corners of the selection to adjust the shadow irregularly. So it looks like the letter is not completely parallel to the background and for sure this will give a little bit more realism to the piece. Now I'm gonna decide what elements are on top and which ones are behind. For example, I'll create an effect on this red piece here like it's cutting the letter and so the letter projects some kind of shadow on it. Go to the layers panel, create a new layer on top of this little cut and make it a clipping mask. So the shadows only affect the layer underneath. To create the shadows we'll be using an inverted texture brush. In the set, each texture comes with an inverted brush that works perfectly as a shader. If you have the freebie, you can convert, for example, the texture called Fabric-like by tapping on the brush, going to Grain, Edit, tapping with two fingers on the texture and then clicking Done. Now your shader is ready to give some awesome shadows. I know it would make more sense that this cut is on top of the letter, but I like being a bit more imaginative about it and do something different. Start spraying some shadows accordingly to your light source. My overall shadows in this piece will be really mild, so it looks like the paper cuts are almost touching. Let's repeat the same steps for all the ripped papers. I'm selecting the shape on the background, creating a clipping mask and again spraying some shadows on it. This time coming from the letter. The shadows should be always darker than the cut papers, but for example, when we are painting shadows on lighter papers, the shadow should be following the tones of them. Our letter is semi-white, so I've decided the shadows would be brownish. If you have a red surface, for example, then the shadows should be a dark red tone and so on. Since some of these papers have a bit of transparency, as I previously told you, some shadows will be shown through them. To avoid this, paint your shadows and then select the paper on top. Click on the selection tool and select automatic on the bottom part. Now tap inside your selected shape and move your pencil right and left until you have a good selection. Head back to your shadow, scroll three fingers down and tap on cut. Now your shadow is not showing through anymore and it just shows where it's supposed to be. Play around with some colors and shadows. I'll leave you to it for a while and see you later.
So when your shadows are on top of two papers at the same time, there's no need to do a clipping mask on each one of them. Just create a new layer under the shape projecting those shadows and set your layer to multiply by tapping on that little letter N on each layer. Multiply will make the color of your shadow affect differently on each color that's painted on and so your shadow will look realistic on both papers. Alright, so another little tip on the papers is that if you feel their transparency is not showing their color properly, you can always duplicate them and joining them with a pinch on the layers panel. Now they're gonna show a more vibrant color. All right, well, the most difficult part is done. Now let's give our piece an extra punch by adding some textures. As you see, the stamp papers already have a bunch of textures on them, but nevertheless, we're still to get some nice textures on our letter and background. If you feel like your papers are not rough enough, then you can also add some more textures on them. In order to do this, we will select the paper textures included in the set or freebie and we will scroll through them until finding something we like. The way to apply this is pretty simple. Since they are seamless, you just have to create a clipping mask on top of the surface you want to paint on and start spraying them. Play around with colors and even several textures at the same time. Just have fun with it. Sometimes it's great to change the size of the grain of these brushes. In here, I'm using the pentagonal embossed brush and I feel like the shapes look way too small. To change this, tap on the brush inside the library and once you enter the brush studio, go to grain and change the scale. Once you're satisfied, click done. While you do the final textures, you will want to adjust some of the colors. Some textures will tone down your original colors, so if you're not happy with them, select the colored papers and go to the adjustments panel. Now, tap on hue, saturation, brightness and adjust until you're happy with the result. To add the final touch, we will stamp one of the overlay shadows included in the set. You can try them all out and see what fits better your piece. 
So add a new layer on top of everything else and make sure to position the shadow where the light comes from. I'm setting it to multiply but feel free to try other mode. Also, make sure you bring its opacity down if you don't want it to be too visible. Okay, well, if you enjoyed this tutorial, give us a thumbs up and consider subscribing to our channel for more tutorials. Also, if you want something a tad more advanced, check our previous tutorial where I'm teaching how to do a complete illustration with some of the techniques you just learned. I wanted to thank you all for the feedback on the last video. We are preparing a bunch of new tutorials based on your suggestions. And if you have more ideas on what you want to learn next, let us know in the comments. Thank you and see you next time. Remember that by joining our newsletter community, you will get access to all of our freebies, including free Procreate brushes, textures and fonts, and other fresh stuff we cook up every month. Remember that you'll find the link in the description below. And with that said, let, let her away! away.